So, without notes then, Christina Ellingson is um, an activist and a writer. She um, heads up, am I pronouncing it right? Matriarchan Publishers, which is uh, for women by women publishers in, in Norway, where she hails from. She's also the director of WDI um, Norway, am I right? Okay, look, I'm doing so well here without notes. And um, Christina has really come to prominence recently because she is under police investigation under hate crime legislation in Norway um, for merely saying that a man cannot be a mother, a woman, a girl or a lesbian. And the hate crime legislation over in Norway could carry a potential sentence, a jail sentence, of three years for somebody convicted um, of this potential crime that Christine has been investigated for. So she's going to come and speak to us now and we will have a Q&A after Christine as well. Thanks so much. Wow. Wow, thanks. <laughs> yes, hello. Let me see if I can find my speech here before the police comes and takes me. <laughs> yes, my name is Christina. I'm from Norway. Uh, I do not believe that men who claim to be women, girls, mothers or lesbians are what they claim to be. And I was informed. easy to become like a radical sort of revolutionary <laughs> these days. Like. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do not believe that men who claim to be mothers, girls, uh, women or lesbian are what they claim to be. Uh, I was informed by the Norwegian police in May of this year that I was under investigation suspected for hate speech on the grounds of gender identity. The law being enacted against me um, is the law I went to the hearing for in 2020, where I warned the committee about the concept of gendered identity uh, and the inclusion of that into criminal law. I told them that uh, the concept will make it to um, put subjective beliefs as the basis of what's considered punishable by law. And I also told them that the abuse of this law would be inevitable because to certain groups, having an ob objective understanding of biological sex is already considered hateful. And women are already being reported to the police by activists for having such an objective understanding of biological sex. And now I, it turned out that the police were calling me to inform me that this very thing that I had warned the Justice Committee about was happening against me. So the man who reported me to the police is a man who is employed at the leading queer organization in Norway. He is a man who claims to be a lesbian mother. <laughs> His job is to be an advisor in gender and sexuality, which I find especially ironic. The lobby organization that he works for has several goals on their political agenda, which is directly dependent on the sexual and reproductive explo exploitation of women. For instance, the le legalization of surrogacy, the legalization of procuration and brothels, the reversal of the Nordic model. And they're also working to extend the discrimination law to include the protection of fetishes and BDSM. <laughs> yes, so already before we go, in, go into uh, the necessity of being able to differentiate between biological sex and this concept, gendered identity, in a functioning democracy, the opposing views held by me as a women's rights activist and this lobby organization working for the queer patriarchy, would, uh, in a functioning democracy, our opposing views would have to meet at some point. And when this man didn't block me, <laughs> uh, which uh, is usually the case, uh, our views did meet and we had many discussions. The result being that he reported every single interaction we have we've had, had in the year since the hate crime law <coughs> came into effect. 
So the statements he reported was also later extended to include one hearing and a TV debate. These statements all include my assertion after assertion of the following, men cannot be women, girls, mothers or lesbians because men are male. <laughs> <laughs> Revolutionary. <laughs> um, yes, because they are male. Uh, because uh, and also because it is impossible to change sex. And women are female. For that, I have now been interviewed by the police for a total of nine hours, extended over two interviews. And the police are yet to reach a conclusion. <laughs> I'm still waiting to hear if they will drop the case or if they're going to charge me with a hate crime. And if I'm charged, I face the risk of up to three years of prison. <coughs> so women and girls are not a hormone level, not a feeling, not an inner sense of femininity. Women are not small castrated men, Sex is a biological mechanism for reproduction. It is defined by an organism's potential to produce one of the two types of gametes, ova or sperm. Nothing more and nothing less. Ova is character characterized by having the potential to pass on the two types of DNA that's nece necessary to sustain life. And those types are chromosomal DNA that everybody's heard about and mitochondrial DNA which not everybody's heard about, but which is very important. Sperm is characterized by having the potential to pass on just one type of DNA, which is chromosomal DNA. As a consequence of the nature of biological sex, the overproducing sex of a species, that is, the female, is the only one facing the risks of reproduction. For humans, these risks include social, financial, legal, and cultural risks, in addition to the physical risks of pregnancy, birth, and maternity. Women are adult human female. Women's rights are developed to address and mitigate these risks in order to prevent biological sex to be a source of discrimination against women and girls. It is as impossible to change biological sex as it is to change species. There exists no combination of thought patterns, mannerisms, hobbies, preferences or aesthetics that can disqualify a man from the male sex and qualify them to the female sex. Men who claim to be women are essentially doing women face and are as successful at challenging sexism as blackface is at challenging racism. the objective reality of biological sex and to replace legal protections against sex-based discriminations against women with the subjective concept of gendered identity is to erase women's rights. I have the right to reject any personal convictions held by anyone if those convictions fail to convince me. And women have the right to reject the personal convictions held by men, especially when the convictions held by men are about women, and especially when these convictions replace an objective understanding of biological sex with subjective concepts such as gendered identities. It does not matter why men claim to be women, why they are motivated to do so, if it is because they have a mental disorder or they do not have a mental disorder or it's because they have a fetish or they swear they don't have a fetish. The motivations make no difference. There exists no fair trade, ethically sourced, climate friendly motivations <laughs> <laughs> that makes the claim that a man is a woman, girl, mother or lesbian true. Ever. <laughs> Women and girls are female human beings and any definition that includes men in this category is a definition that fundamentally undermines the humanity of women and girls and which is dependent on reducing women and girls to stereotypes. And we have important things to talk about. 
And we need the leeway to be able to talk about these things free, freely. The investigation against me is particularly ironic because the law that is enacted against me excludes women as a protected characteristics, which means that if he is right, the man that's, that has reported me to police, he would not, the, the law would in theory not apply to him. <laughs> However, if he is what I say he is, which is a man who claims to be a woman, he would have protection in the law, but then again, I'm be right. the question, is that the purpose of this law? For men employed at lobby organizations working for the queer patriarchy to be able to persecute women who disagree with them by claiming a level of legal protection that is not even afforded to the people they imitate? We have many things to talk about regarding the safety and dignity of women and girls. We need to be able to talk about laws that accurately identify and apply to the protection of women against sexual and reproductive exploitation, and especially in light of the developments within biotechnology, as well as, well as within the booming and harmful industries that enable sexual exploitation against women and girls and children at large. In order to do this, we need to be able to talk about what a woman is without facing the risk of persecution. So, don't obey in advance. Don't debate in advance. We need to talk as long as we actually can. And I would like to thank you for having invited me here.